Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Slater. Quote of the day from Confucius. Choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. All right, so 11.5 is all about regular polygons. The goal is to find the area of regular polygons. And um, the main part of, or the main two parts of finding area of the regular polygons are the apothem and the radius. So I wanna talk a little bit about those uh, right now. So um, apothem is a segment of a regular polygon joining the center to the midpoint of any side. So if you look at this pentagon, that is supposed to be a regular pentagon, hence all the sides are equal to each other. And then if you have a circle inside of it, uh, do your best to try to make every single uh, side tangent to the circle. Okay, and um, I'm going to call both of these, or here's our center, and if I connect those to the side, that is what we call the apothem. So I'm going to put a little letter A there. Okay, so one part of an apothem that you need to know is that an apothem is the radius of a circle inscribed in a polygon, which you can see in the picture. Okay, and secondly, if you continue looking at all the other apothems, if they're the radius of the circle, then they're all going to be congruent to each other. So all apothems are congruent. Uh, the third thing is, um, notice in the definition, regular polygons. So don't let any other polygons fool you. It's only regular polygons that have apothems. And last thing I want to tell you, and you may be able to tell from the picture, but an apothem also is a perpendicular bisector of a side. So there's your perpendicular, and then those two parts will be congruent to each other. Okay, so let's go, uh, let's go ahead and write that down. An apothem is a perpendicular bisector of a side. All right, so the second most important thing is the radius. And a radius is a segment of a regular polygon joining the center to any vertex. One thing about a radius is that a radius of a regular polygon is also the radius of a circle circumscribed about a polygon. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a circle off to the side here and then uh, make a pentagon. It doesn't always have to be a pentagon, but I guess that's my favorite shape today. That is supposed to be regular. Again, just um, winging it here. Uh, so the radius, if you can see, you've got the circle on the outside. So if you connect if you connect the center to one of the vertices, you can see that it's the radius of the circle. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing I want to, to know about a radius is that a radius of a regular of a regular polygon bisects an angle, or the angle, I guess. Okay, so if I go ahead and connect some pieces here, for example, like this is the apothem, and that's your radius. What is happening is that these two angles right here are going to be congruent to each other, and the radius is creating that to happen. Okay, so now I want you to push pause and go ahead and get out your formula sheet. So let's first talk about an area of an equilateral triangle. Okay, one thing you can have as a formula is one half little a times p. So that capital letter P means perimeter. And the little a is the apothem. So if you want to write that down on your formula sheet, that's a good idea. And then also we can go back to our old 
uh, not old methods, but um, things we've learned before, which is just regular one-half base times height. So you may need that as well. And then also another review would be side squared, being all these the same exact side because it's an equilateral triangle. Uh, side squared, radical 3, all over 4. Okay, and then a regular polygon is only one-half a times P, which again is apothem times perimeter. And I just have a few pictures here just to, to visualize where the apothem and the perimeter is. Um, so we've talked about a pentagon before already. So the apothem is the perpendicular to the side. So you can put a little A there. And then the radius is going to be to the vertice. Okay. Uh, for a hexagon, find the center point. Go and go straight down for the apothem and then over to the vertice for the radius. And then for a square, we know that that could be just area equals side squared, but if you don't have certain information, you may need the apothem, which would be straight down forming a perpendicular, and then the radius would be connecting to the vertice. Okay, the first two are really nice examples here because on this octagon, the apothem is already given. So we can assume, whoops, so we can assume that this is going to be a regular polygon if it's given an apothem. So we have an octagon with an apothem that is going to go to the uh, perpendicular to the side. So that's 4.8. And then it says uh, a side at 4 centimeters long. So from here to here, each side is four centimeters long. So if the area is one half apothem times perimeter, we have the apothem given to us, so that's gonna be 4.8. And then the perimeter is four times eight because we have an octagon. And when you multiply all that together, you're gonna get 76.8. So I guess if you haven't got it out yet, maybe a calculator would be a good idea just so you can check, check your work, make sure you know how to do these. Um, a square is, uh, has a side of 24 from here to here and um, with an apothem that is 12 inches. So that's going to go from the center to the edge, making 12. And if we're going to find the area of this, we could do side squared to get 24 squared, which is 576. Or we could use um, the apothem formula, which is 1 half apothem times the perimeter, which is 24 times 4. Obviously, you want to take the easier way, but since this is new, I wanted to practice a little bit. Um, so in this case, it would be inches squared because we are dealing with area. So either way is appropriate here. All right, so let's go on to the next, next examples. So example number three, these are so much more fun just because you have to think a little more. Um, so let's talk, think about what, what happens when you have an equilateral triangle and then we know that um, a radius is going to bisect the angle, which we talked about in a couple slides ago. So if we have a 60 degree angle for all three, that means this one's going to be 30 and 30. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the apothem. That's going to be perpendicular. And we end up having a 30, 60, 90, 90, degree, 90 degree triangle here. Okay, so if that's 30, 60, 90, and this radius is 8, that means the apothem is going to be 4 inches, and then that means that this link from here to here is going to be 4 radical 3. So after you have that in your, um, in your triangle, now we can actually solve this, because area equals 1 half times apothem. We know the apothem is 4, and we know the perimeter is going to be 8 radical 3, because you have to double that 4 radical 3, times 3 sides. Okay, and so after you multiply that together, we'll get uh, 48 radical 3, and let's go ahead and leave it in simplify radical form with inches squared on the back. Okay, and then, okay, the first thing we have to do on this is to find this angle, because that's going to help us with our triangle that's going to form in the pentagon. Okay, so if we extend this, make a little exterior angle, we know that this angle is 360 divided by 5 which is 72 degrees. So if that's 72 degrees, that means every angle inside the pentagon is 108. And if a radius bisects the um, angle, then both of these are going to be 54. Okay, and so that's gonna help us with our triangle that's gonna be formed inside with the apothem, which is here, and, um, and the radius. Okay, so how are we gonna find A is by using a little bit of trig. And since A and the 20 are opposite in hypotenuse. We're going to use 
sine of 54 equals A for apothem over 20. And after you find out what the apothem is, we're just going to go ahead and round that to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be 16.2 centimeters. Okay, so then all we're going to do is do a little Pythagorean theorem. So we have um, x squared, I'll just call that little guy right there x, plus 16.2 squared is equal to 20 squared. Okay, so then after that, uh, let's go ahead and get the answer of 11.8, and then we can solve for the area. Area equals 1 half apothem which is the 16.2, and then the perimeter would be 11.8 times 2, or you can just say 11.8 times 10. That's up to you, because this would right here be the side. And then to get the perimeter, there are five different sides, so we'd have to multiply it by 5. All right, so go ahead and push pause, see if you can get the same answer as this. All right, so hopefully we are the exact same, and that's how you find the area of that pentagon. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, this one is just like number four, so if you could push pause and go ahead and try to solve it, and then come back and check the answer. All right, so this one, we again have to find the angle. 30, 60, or 360 divided by 6 gives us an answer of 60, so that means every single one of the inside triangles or angles are 60. And the radius is going to bisect the two of them, giving us a 30, 60, 9 degree triangle with the apothem and the radius. So if that's 25, that means this length right here is 12.5. And then this apothem would be 12.5 radical 3. Let me write that a little better. Okay. And so once we have all that information, we can go ahead and find the answer. So 1 half apothem is 12.5. Uh, radical 3, whoops, forgot the little radical 3 on here. And then um, the perimeter is 12.5 uh, times 2, because we have to get the full side, and then that would be times 6, because there are 6 sides. And if you put all that together, 937.5 radical 3, and again, we'll leave that in simplified radical form. All right. Number six, find the area of a regular pentagon with the apothem of eight inches. Okay, so on this one, uh, once again, extend. You probably already remember that it's 108, but just to make sure, uh, this exterior angle we find by taking 360 divided by five because it is a regular polygon. Now, if you're thinking, okay, I never do it that way, well, interior angle, just to reemphasize um, the interior angle, how to find them, you take the S, which is five, the sides, minus 2 times 180 all over 5 and you get 108. So either way you do that it's going to work out. Just, just keep in mind that those both formulas will give you the um, interior angle. Okay, so what they gave us was the apothem is 8 and if we're trying to find the area of this we need to know what the side is. So let's go ahead and form our radius and then know that that's 54 degrees right here and then the parts that we know are the 8 or no and we do not know the x, but we need to know that. So it looks like that's opposite and adjacent, which is tangent of 54 equals opposite over um, adjacent. So if you solve for x, you're going to end up with 5.8, go ahead and round that to the nearest tenth, and then just plug everything in. Apothem was 8, and the perimeter would be um, 5.8 times 2, so that's 11.6 times 5 for a final answer of 232 inches squared. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, okay, so I wrote things in there already, so if you need push pause, go ahead and write those in uh, carefully, and then I want to get to the more difficult stuff. Okay, we haven't seen one of these before where we have a perimeter of 6 and then 8 sides. So we're going to have to take eight, uh, 6 divided by 8 to get 0.75 for each side, and then to get the... Um, this part would end up dividing that by 2. So that's going to give you 0.375. So it's, again, a little different than what we've seen already. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, push pause and see if you can figure out how to finish. All right, so hopefully you got 2.7 centimeters squared. If you just take a look at the work, you can um, ask any questions tomorrow in class. And to end the joke of the day, what is, what's yours, but your friends say it more than you do? See you tomorrow.